Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. This is the meeting of the House Special Committee on Fisheries, and it will come to order at 10.03 on Tuesday, April 3rd. Members present, Representative Christ Tompkins, Representative Chenault, Representative Eastman, and myself, Chair Stutes. Uh, we have a quorum. I'm going to ask you to please make sure your phones are on mute or silence. Uh, we are allowing the use of electronic devices during committee meetings. If, and we have Representative Edgman here with us, joining us currently, too. We are asking that staff and members of the audience not approach the table. If you need to pass a note to committee members, please get the attention of my committee aide, Matt Greening, and he will take care of it. I'd like to thank Brian Glynn, the Fisheries Committee Secretary, and <clears throat> Eileen Keim from the Juno LIO for uh, teleconferencing support. Our only order of business today, we will be presenting a new CS to House Bill 199, walking through the changes, going over the sectional analysis, and holding committee discussions. We will not be taking public testimony on the bill today, but we will be hearing from the public uh, this Saturday starting at 10 a.m. For months, my office has been bringing all the stakeholders together in a collaborator collaborative effort and open process in attempting to find the right balance between protecting a precious renewable resource that all Alaskans hold dear while still allowing a responsible development to go forward. I believe this draft is more in line with the request by the Board of Fisheries. It is a much needed improvement to Title 16 that focuses on public notice, public comment, the ability for the public to affect the process, criteria for the proper protection of fish, and providing the Department of Fish and Game with more enforcement tools. We also have Representative Tarr joining us. I'm confident that this new version will be a workable product for industry and a breath of fresh air for our fish and game biologists and supporters of increasing protections of salmon habitat. I know people have been waiting this draft, so without further ado, I would ask my staff and fisheries committee aide, Matt Greening, to come um, to present the committee substitute. I'm having Mr. Greening present the changes first, but since it's been a while since we've heard this bill, he will also give a brisk walkthrough of the sectional analysis afterward. May I have a motion to bring the CS before us? Madam Chairman, I would move to adopt the proposed committee substitute work draft LS0438 backslash I as a working document. Hearing no objections, the draft is before us. Welcome, Representative Newman. I would note that the department has representatives in the room and online uh, for questions. In the room, we have Kyle Moselle. Um, Associate Director, Office of Project Management and Permitting, Department of Natural Resources. We have Ben White, Environmental Manager uh, from DOT, and John Boyle, BP Director of Affairs, oh, for questions as well. Online, we have Ben White, Natural Resources Manager, Department of Transportation, Andrew Sayers Fay, Director, Division of Water, Department of DEC. Uh, Ron Bankert, Fish and Game Coordinator, Division of Habitat, South Central Department of Fish and Game. Members, um, please feel free to ask Mr. Greening questions during his explanation of the changes in sectional analysis. So we'll get moving forward. Mr. Greening, if you'd identify yourself and your affiliation for the record and proceed with your presentation, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the committee for the record, Matt Greening, uh, staff to Representative Louise Stutes and Fisheries Committee aide. Um, I'm going to start on page one of the explanation of changes, version N to I. Um, on page one, lines two and three, this is the bill's title. Uh, it was slightly altered. altered. 
He had previously read and relating to fishways and protection of anadromous fish and other fish habitat. It now reads relating to fishways and the protection of anadromous fish and anadromous fish habitat. Uh, the major difference being that the protection of anadromous fish was included, included um, and uh, other fish habitat was also removed. This is a reflection of the fact that what used to be the significant adverse effects section is now the consideration of effects on anadromous fish and anadromous fish habitat. It just seemed appropriate that we put language in there that the commissioner also consider effects on anadromous fish along with anadromous fish habitat because the two are work hand in hand together. Um, on page one. Excuse me, Representative Newman. Thank you, Madam Chair, and for the opportunity to ask while we're going through this bill. And I don't know how far you want to get into the explanations, I just, Madam Chair, but um, maybe the, because this is in the title and I think this is a large part of the bill is maybe if we could get from staff as the reasons behind the changes here, or maybe the, at least the high points of the reasons of why the changes, if there was comments or issues that were a concern, you know, there may be statutes that were, I don't know, that were applicable. Um, a little bit of background information of their changes, uh, if we could. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through the Chair, absolutely, Representative. Um, uh, page 1, line 5, through page 2, line 28. Um, added a new section 1 that adds legislative findings and policy language to the uncodified law of the state of Alaska. Um, I would like to point out before I get into this that this is non-binding language. It's essentially intent language that's in the front of the bill. So it, 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 while it states the uh, findings and policies of the legislature, nothing in this section is, is binding. Um, and basically the, you know, the front part of it just uh, affirms the legislature's commitment to sustainable salmon fisheries and that the fisheries be managed and resources managed in a way that's consistent with the Constitution. And that's uh, subsection A. Um, and it's on, that's on page 1, line 7 through page 2, line 4. Um, and subsection B, which is also part of the legislative findings and policy, uh, on page 2, lines 5 through uh, 28, uh, it's additional language containing guidelines for the protecting uh, anadromous fish spawning, rearing, and migratory habitat. This language was pulled directly from uh, C1AI, 2I, 3I, 4, 5, uh, CD, um, 1D, 1E, 1F of 5AAC 39222, and that is the policy for the sustainable uh, policy of management of sustainable salmon fisheries, which is part of a regulation pass package that was passed by the Alaska Board of Fisheries. It just provides um, guidelines in uh, the protection of salmon habitat. And again, that is non-binding uh, discretionary language, but it, it seemed appropriate to put that in, in the preface of the bill. Um, on page 2, line 29 through page 3, line 7, uh, we added a new subsect or section 2 that amends the Fishway Act uh, to require that the passage of upstream and downstream fish is provided for. Uh, currently, uh, AS 1605841 only requires a fish passage for downstream migrants. So all that we did here was we added in Section 2 our, to existing statute the words upstream and on line 2 in front of downstream. So that it's, there was a concern uh, that, that I heard that perhaps this created a loophole whereby you would be required to be required only to provide fish passage for downstream migrants, but obviously if fish can't get up the stream, you very soon will not have fish going down the stream. Um, so this is just kind of a, there hasn't been an issue with this so far, but it's just something that seemed appropriate to put in there to make it clear that upstream and downstream passage is to be provided for. Uh, moving on to section four. Representative Newman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Matt, when we're, I know that I was going to purchase a piece of property one time and it, I would have had to build a bridge across in the dawn of a stream. Um, would have just, I called and see what it would have been for a permit to do that and was told just like if I had a flatbed off a semi or something it's used quite a bit in Alaska or it could be logs. Um, as long as I didn't disturb the banks going into the stream it would be okay. But when I'm looking at this and it talks about every dam or other obstruction built by any other person across her stream is that, you know, a lot of times we have bridges again so people can access and across these streams. Is th but this would be an obstruction across the stream um, frequented by salmon and other fish. And if people were put as passage on that, so it could be people in a canoe. It depends when the high water levels come up. Could it, I, I have no idea of what that could be mean. Do you have thoughts on that? Um, through the chair, uh, Representative Newman, uh, this, 
this is in current statute right now and it has been pretty much since statehood. Um, the only thing we're changing here is upstream, but I would say that as long as under this wording, as long as fish are able to go up and down, previously just downstream, but as long as they're able to move in and out freely, um, that would satisfy this section. Did I answer your question there, Representative? Yep, yep. And, and thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. And I know a lot of this is currently in statute. A lot of this is being added in and taken out and stuff because Certainly. of other, other parts. So thank you for the explanation. Mm -hmm. You bet. So moving on to the next change on Section 4 on page 3, lines 18 through 28. Formerly Section 2 on page 2, line 1 through page 3. Uh, line 11. And when I say formerly, I'm just referring to the previous version, version N, so that if members want to look back at what it previously said, they also have that reference there for the new bill version and the old bill version. Uh, subsection A on page 3, um, lines uh, 19 through 21, formerly page 2, lines 2 through 4. We deleted uh, adjacent riparian areas and inserted wetland. Um, Currently, DNR has the authority on repairing areas. There's a number of municipal ordinances that have repairing setbacks. There, uh, the Forest Resources and Practices Act also has uh, established uh, repairing setbacks. And we didn't want to overlap that authority, so we removed the adjacent uh, repairing areas from the bill. And it's something that, uh, as is current practice, when ADF and G wants to have protection for a setback and repairing area, they have to approach DNR and ask them for that authority on a project, and we didn't want to interrupt that process. We did insert wetland because right now um, ADF and G is currently cataloging uh, wetlands in the anadromous waters catalog. They don't have explicit authority in the statute to do so, so we wanted to pr provide them with that and make it clear that um, that wetlands that are cataloged and surveyed as anadromous are also included in the anadromous waters catalog and that they have the explicit statutory authority to do so. And um, moving on, uh, former subsection. Representative Newman. Thank you, Madam Chair. I th Matt, I think what I heard there would be a change in statute that would allow aid Department of Alaska Department of Fish and Game to uh, categorize or put into catalogs uh, different uses of fisheries or different streams or how they were used or what they were, uh, and this would be a, a fairly large change in statute? Uh, through the Chair, uh, Representative Newman, um, the Anadromous Waters Catalog is already in statute, and they're already cataloging that. The change here is that we're putting wetlands in statute as something that they're statutorily authorized and obligated to catalog. It's actually something they started doing about two or three years ago on their own. And we just wanted to make sure that they actually had the explicit authority to do so. But the catalog itself, that's, that's in statute. It's, so we're, all we're doing is adding a different type of water body that they're statutorily um, uh, authorized to catalog, which they're already doing. Follow up? Is this in consultation with other departments, or do they have the full authority to make these changes themselves, and would that be a change in statute? Through the chair, uh, Representative Newman, it is a change in statute. Um, I would have to defer to the department as to far as how they came about cataloging wetlands, but I do know it's something that they started doing several years ago, cataloging. And it's not, it's not all wetlands.